Hello! It is gear blank time, so I've been uh, roughing these up. So these faces are going to get taken off, which is why I can stamp the number of teeth on them. Um, you may notice, as we zoom in, this one is marked 60, and this one is marked 61. So we're going to be making a set of bevel gears, they have 60 teeth on the input, 61 on the outputs with a 1.25 module 90 degrees quite obviously um, and uh, at the moment they have a 22 millimeter bore with a key slot in them they will both go out to 35 later um, the reason for that is that I have A little keyed mandrel which I made so that I can cut the teeth and that drops in there quite nicely so we're going to we're going to get on with cutting the diameters and angles on these um, the way that we're going to do this if you have a fast pan over to here is using this piece of paper which is the output from a program I wrote to um, to calculate the angles and dimensions for bevel gears um, it's not uh, it's not complete yet but it's enough for this stage at least change plan we're not turning the uh, diameters and angles in the four jaw I'm going to make up a uh, little a little 22 uh, 22mm arbor that can sit in a 14mm collet and a piece of craptonium um, basically it means that I've got space to space to move and uh, space to, to space to get round around the back of the angles and it's a lot less, less of a pain to, to piss about with and yeah 22mm arbors are always good And so there we have it, one uh, 14 millimeter to 22 millimeter adapter with a ring for compression, end cap pulled from one of my uh, one of my homemade uh, uh, milling cutter holders. Surface finish is a bit near, but um, actually. It's but it does uh, it does the trick. It runs true, which is good. So key in, that's another piece of craptonium. Blank. You go on there. Up. That goes on there. Tighten down with an M10 bolt. The whole lot goes in a 14mm collet in the lathe. Like so. Hopefully that's in focus and not the crud on the back plate. And we can lock that in place. And there we go, we're not quite tight. Uh, And there we go. For the 60 tooth gear, which is the one that we're about to look at, so we need to set the exterior angle, which is this angle here, to 45, 53 minutes and 7 seconds. One of the problems with my piece of software is that it uh, states the 
the infeed this way in terms of uh, 20 millimeters of cross of, uh, of compound slide travel um, and for angles like this I'm getting more than 10 millimeters of infeed which is more than my indicator can handle so I need to do some do some calculation and uh, work out what we need so 1436 is the number we're looking for and if we multiply that by 5 because that's for 20 mil if we multiply it by 5 we can get it for 10 mil so for 10 millimeters we should get 7 millimeters in and 180 yeah 7 7.18 um, millimeters in so, so that's two four six eight ten now I am reading seven point one six there which means I'm pretty close to the angle that I need so what we're going to do is we're going to come back out, we need to go in very very slightly, it really is a tiny tiny movement, so we will loosen off this bolt slightly and we'll get our knocking stick and just nudge in very very slightly and tighten up. So let's get back to some reasonable position. So 10 on the infeed. Move this to zero. And we can go one, two, three, four. Five. I'd say that is pretty much bang on the angle that we want. So we tighten up the other side. And that is our infeed angle for cutting the outside angle of the gear. Well, battery ran out again last night, so I didn't actually get any footage of me cutting the rest of these gear blanks. They're now done. Faces are turned. We've got uh, we've got the angles and so on that we're that we're looking for. Now, I have made my life rather more com rather more complex by going for a 60 and 61 tooth gear. Uh, rather than just going for a straight 60 to 60. 60 to 60 I'd have two gears which are absolutely identical and I'd, I'd just have one set of teeth to cut um, with the same uh, the same settings on the dividing head for every one but that means that uh, as your as your gears rotate it's always the same teeth which engage with the same teeth um, which when you're dealing with imperfectly cut gears because I don't have a Gleason cutting machine um, you don't get any kind of averaging um, of the wear of the the wear of the teeth, and if you've got one tooth that's going to be a bit off, well then uh, you you've got problems. Uh, it'll probably make a lot more a lot more noise. So I decided to go 60 to 61, which means that for every rotation the uh, the teeth offset by one, and you average average out the wear across everything. I don't I don't know whether it's relevant or not. It is making my life a bit more tricky, but no big deal. Just means I have to cut another uh, another wheel for the uh, for the dividing head. Anyway, there we go. Those are ready to uh, ready to go. I now have uh, an arbor which I can use on the milling machine with uh, with 22 uh, 22 mil cutters, which is good. Um, 
because I've needed one of those for a while as well. Um, a 14 mil collet is a bit uh, is a bit slim, um, but the problem with W20 collets, the ones that I've got, is that um, as soon as you get above 14 millimeters, they're stepped internally, and you don't get much depth. Um, here, for example, is uh, is a centre sat in uh, a 15 mil collet. Um, the step starts there, so that's that's how much depth you've got, which is maybe what two and a half centimeters, maybe an inch. It's it's not uh, it's not that good. It's it's good for work holding. It's not terribly good for tool holding. Um, of course, what I really should do is uh, is find myself some either some dedicated W20 arbors or um, some W20 emergency collets and make up some arbors. Or sort out gear cutting on here and uh, just make up my own. That would be a, that'd be another way to go. But anyway, there we go. That's uh, that's that for today. And uh, we'll, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Bye. Uh, what people might refer to as a yard sale purchase. Um, a really nice little toolmaker's vice. Um, I suspect it was somebody's apprenticeship project, given that we have uh, normal, uh, normal gear, uh, the normal gears. Given, given the fact that this has uh, normal threads on here, um, and the bottom appears to have been finished with, uh, with a file, um, I suspect it's somebody's apprenticeship project. Can't find any any makers marks on it. Um, it was a bit rusty. Um, it's looking a bit, a bit oily at the moment, and a little bit brown. But um, the brown is is not uh, is not too much to worry about. Um, it's in really nice condition, apart from a few a few dings on the teeth. It's been dropped a couple of times. Um, I suspect not by the person who made it, because they wouldn't have left it without uh, without filing them back. Um, so it's got a couple of bruises on the corners, or had a couple of bruises on the corners that I've taken out. Um, I've checked it up on the surface plates and it's well within one hundredth of a millimeter in in all the various squareness dimensions so a very nice indeed nice little purchase for five euros bish bosh so I have to make some hold down clamps for it but um, it can also do dual duty in the bigger vice so um, that's quite nice <laughs>